Hello people, it's Poet, and this is a basic review of Roguelands 1.0, just available on Steam now. Uh, it's still in development, so that 1.0 probably won't stick, but I just wanted to do a little gameplay footage of it, show you how it is, what it's like. Now, I'm actually going to make a new character for the purposes of this review, and as Magisite, like Magisite will come up a lot, I'm sure, because if you've played Magisites by the same developer, if you've played Magisite and you like Magisite, you will like Roguelands. It's not even a question. You can unlock classes the same way as before, or I should say races, the same as before. Um, they all have different traits, and they all have different starter weapons. The best one I find is the Hiveling, but that's just my personal choice. Let's just try Drifter out of curiosity, okay? So we got this guy, he's a Drifter apparently. Uh, some of them do come with different variants, like if I pick my Wanderer again. Uh, I do have a couple variants that I can cycle through that, again, you unlock as you play. Um, there are difficulty levels, basically standard or Iron Man. Iron Man, you don't have a storage, so that makes it a little bit tougher. And I'll show you guys why when we play. Uh, likewise, you get different uniforms that you can unlock. Um, and uh, eventually you get different allegiances that you can also be aligned to, which currently don't have a purpose, I, I don't believe. Um, you can also choose different ways of aligning yourself. Um, personally, I like uh, being dexterity-based, so dexterity for a gunner, and vitality also very important for any race, I think. So let's just create this character with the name of Eevee, I guess, randomly chosen. Create. Here's where you can host a ser uh, multiplayer server if you wanted to, but we're just going to do single player. So here's a ship, and this ship, no matter what character you use, you can modify this ship. Just for cosmetic reasons, it has no effect on the gameplay whatsoever. You can remove tiles, uh, you can then place those tiles back, and in their, the in-game shop you can buy new tiles and new structures to put inside of your ship. So all of these are different things that you can buy in the ship. Uh, these two levels here. You're also given a junk merchant to turn stuff and loot that you get into coins, the credits. Uh, you've got specialty shop for specialty currency. Uh, you've got card collection in-game. Here's a throwback right here to Magisite with this character. I mean, it's really really similar to Magisite in its appearance and it's really appealing actually the graphics in Magisite were good and they're still good in Rogueland so definitely don't mind it unlike Magisite we actually do have somewhat of a questing system so if I talk to this guy right now he does have a dialogue and he will issue us a quest so if we Basically, his quest right now is to get a special item from this massive um, Tyranog, I think he called it, creature. And once you give it to him, he'll level you up again. Uh, the ship also comes with little droids that earn you that world currency for getting the rare collectibles. And you can upgrade those. So I want to show you guys kind of a sneak peek at what I've collected on other characters. I have an array of different items, currencies, weapons, um, emblems, which I'll get to in a second, and of course those trading cards, which I talked about that you can collect and put in your ship. So, the crafting system. Very, very different than Magisite in just about every way. Um, as you play through the levels, you get these little drops from the mobs. And what you can do once you have a stack of 10, I have a stack of 10 right here. We go up to the Emblem Forge, click on it, boom, we've got ourselves a little emblem. So what can you do with all of these emblems? That is the question. So I've got a bunch of emblems here that you can see. Um, if I grab, say, all my Tier 1 items, all the Tier 1 emblems, I can go into the Gear Forge, which is this little anvil, click on the hamburger in the corner, and you can see all the different crafting recipes that I've unlocked. Now, if you go on the wiki, you can just look them up and make them. Uh, these are the ones that I've learned for my specific purposes. 
So we have shields. We have different droids for harvesting materials. We have helmets. We've got armor. And, of course, a few weapons that we can craft as well. So to get us started, let's craft ourselves uh, one of these. So actually, let's craft ourselves... Yeah, let's craft ourselves one of these. So if we just click on it, it'll automatically take the resources. But if we don't want to do that, if we want to actually have a random chance at it... Say I want this one now, okay? So it's an eyeball emblem. It's a herb emblem or herb emblem and it's a planet and oh no it's not <laughs> I'm blind I apologize it's a, a flutter flutter by flutterfly <laughs> emblem so let's let's do it in that order and what we can do when we craft it if we put it in this order put it in the slots we have this little option here to click on it and it will give us a random chance at a better than standard item so right here this vorpal hood Level 1, it just has a white name to it, Vorpal Hood. It is not a rare, unique, uh, or epic, I think they call it, or legendary item. It is just a, a random, uh, plain old item that I crafted automatically. If I click on this, there's a chance, it wasn't this time, but there was a chance that it would have been a little bit better than the standard. So it is actually kind of beneficial to get the recipes out and actually kind of craft them. I don't know, I'll be honest, I don't know if you can just do that by clicking on it if there's still a random chance, but I've never seen it happen uh, that way, so I'm not going to assume that it works that way. So, now we've got a helmet, we've got a little bit of armor. Um, the weapon that I have is not my favorite, so I'm going to switch it out for uh, this gun, which is of course in the gunner class that uh, I picked. These weapons, you have to look them up on the wiki. They really scale to different stats, and I know that I have high dexterity, so this weapon will do better damage than it would if I didn't have a high dexterity. So very much like Magicite, the world looks like this. They're randomly generated, um, and the mobs come at you, and when you kill them, you get their drops, and ta-da, you're rich and famous. Um, if I had one beef, it would be that when you go into this shooter mode, or this melee mode, this attack mode, by right-clicking, uh, the black bars appear at the top and the bottom of the screen, uh, maybe to emphasize the attack mode, but honestly, I wish there was a better way about it, because you're in attack mode so often through the game, just about all the time, uh, when you're in a level. Unless you're harvesting like I just did. See how my droid, I click on the resources and my little droid runs over and harvests them. No more picks, no more axes, no more uh, in-world crafting like Magicite. Um, but my beef is still, when I go to this gun mode, um, it really limits the screen size and it's sort of annoying. So, you see that when you kill certain mobs, um, bigger, badder, more upsetting things happen. Um, but as you can see, already, I've leveled up just a few times by killing just a few little things. And my stats are scaling quite well, quite quickly. Um, now, that, that enables me to basically dash around a lot longer without my stamina burning out and my vitality will go up and so on and so forth. Um, when I go into an attack mode, I do have, you can see up at the top, a uh, specialty that I can do, which is a sprinting ability, which just makes me warp around really quick. Um, they do change, like you can get different ones as you play, and it really changes thing up, things up. Some of them are really, really, really... Uh-oh. 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 We got ourselves a, a very bad creature here. You see, this is this is the quest creature that we were supposed to attack. Like, this is... I am probably not ready to fight this guy at this point in the game. Um, so I, I might just actually even avoid him at this point. Um, what we can do is just fly through the level if we really wanted to. Um, get through it without actually hitting a single thing. As you can see, I get to the 
the end. And like Magicite, we get different portal choices. We can go to the deep jungle, or we can go back to the desolate canyon where we're currently in. If we go to the deep jungle, again, it's like the little towns in between Magicite levels. Um, we get to level up a weapon of choice. I'm gonna, or or an armor piece of choice. I'm gonna do weapon actually, um, because those are the things that really come in handy. I feel like if you can deal a load of damage, um, you're great. Uh, you also, in these little town areas, get a random chance at some pretty good loot that you can buy, um, like raising your vitality by one or up to ten, I've even seen, um, and getting some of the little crafting materials that you can make emblems out of. So, putting everything back, because I realized that I had all my emblems on me, and I really didn't want to die with those on me. Um, you can sort them in here like so, and ta-da, we've got our stuff sorted. If I were to go forward in this level, it would take me to the deep jungle, which would be a different place altogether from where we were before, but I also have the ability, if I jump forward here, I have the ability to go back to the spaceship, start crafting materials into different emblems, which makes different armor, different weapons, so on and so forth. If I wanted, but the problem with that is that you cannot then come back to this deep jungle world. This deep jungle world. You'd have to start all over again. Which is kind of beneficial. Magicite didn't really have that feature. You just had to press forward whether you were ready or not. Um, this one, it really lets you grind levels, grind materials, and with this ability to save items, something that Magicite did not have between characters, um, you can just take a my this one that I made for this review purpose, Eevee, Gunner Level 3. Um, I can take anything that I've collected and throw it in here for the characters that I actually do care about and do want to invest time into. Pressing forward, of course, the, the next levels have a different style to them and a new danger in and of themselves. Each creature you face has a different ability, a different look. And of course, doing different things on the levels incite rage. So, on that last one that we were in, that desolate canyon, um, if we had continued to shoot those plants that look like eyeballs, they would incite the rage of a massive worm creature. In this one, your little navigator there tells you a hint. He says, like, you know, I'd be careful about touching these vines if I were you. And at first you're like, well, why? It's not it's not actually doing any damage to me. It's, I'm actually quite fine here. I got 4 out of 7 health, and I still got 4 out of 7 health. Uh, yeah, they're shooting little pink things, but, you know, I can avoid those easily enough. What's the problem here? And then he says, well, I'm picking up a massive heat source in the area. Be careful. Like, you just still don't heed the warning. If you keep doing it... It's the hive mind. Run to the portals, he says. Now, you can optionally fight these things, and they will they will drop pretty good loot, but look, look at this thing. These are the kinds of problems you face with this game. And like Magicite, some very old school difficulty. Oh look, I I unlocked a hat! Right. Beats <laughs> by by Dr. Dre. Um, wow, okay, I got two augments. So see, when you die, you unlock things, and then you have the option to restart again. Old school difficulty to a next level. Um, not only do you have to worry about your health bar being low, no, no red glow of healing like Call of Duty games. Not only that, but when you die... Look at my inventory. Look at my level. It's all gone. It's all cleared. It's done. That makes saving things into this chest very, very, very important between levels. Because you will die. And you will regret everything. You'll have really good armor. You'll have really good weapons. You'll be a very high level. You will die and have to start all over. Just like we used to in the old days. And that's kind of what makes it fun. That's kind of what makes it challenging, and that's why I enjoy it so much. So, 
Full disclosure, the developer of this game did give me the key for this game for free, but I really, I was gonna buy it anyway. It's it's a game that I have had on my wish list for a very, very, very long time. I think they knew that, and they said, "Well, hey, let's let's just let him let him play it." And I am very happy to play it. It didn't influence my review whatsoever. I have literally sank maybe. I've owned this game for a day, and I think I sank 10 hours into it, so it's it's just one of those things that I just have enjoyed again and again and again and again. Uh, they do have a little alchemy system I didn't show, similar to the other Gear Forge. You can create potions. Um, they've got a portal system here. If you want a little bit more of a challenge for 5,000 credits to start, the enemies become way, 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 way harder, but drop way more loot. Um, and, and that's just about all that I wanted to show you guys in this review. A gameplay of this series may happen because multiplayer, I got to play with a few friends earlier, uh, yesterday, and it was a load of fun. I felt, uh, that probably will happen. You get different weapons, different items, different gear, di it's just, ah, it's one of those games where they encourage collection and grinding and... It's it's almost that addictive quality that these kinds of things have that make these so appealing. So, with that, I'm going to end it there. Hope you guys enjoy it. Um, definitely check it out on Steam. No obligation to buy it, obviously, but I think that if you ever liked Magisite, you'd like this. And I actually think that this game does a little bit better than Magisite in several ways, though I do find it much easier. Magisite was relentless in its ability to... When you die, you lose everything. No saving. So the fact that you can actually save things um, does make this a little bit easier than Magisite. And the fact that you can always go back. When you go return to this ship, you can always start from scratch, from level one, all over again to help in the grinding process. That also makes it much easier than Magisite. Um, so it's not quite as rage-worthy as Magisite. It has all the kind of game elements of Magisite. But it has its own unique twist to things. Adds quite a bit to it. I love it. You'll love it too. Rogue Land's on Steam now. See ya. Bye-bye.